Hello everyone. So we are going to talk about momentum and impulse in this chapter. I hope you guys are all excited to learn. All right, so what is momentum? Momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving object measured as a product of its mass and velocity. Momentum, the symbol P, mass times velocity, measured in kilograms times meters per second. I like this example of a snowball uh, rolling down the mountain, if you can see it's a snowball, because as it's going down the mountain, it's gaining mass and it's gaining velocity as it's going down this mountain. So the momentum is increasing because its mass is increasing and its velocity is increasing. All right, let's look at this first question. Which object has, a gr has the greatest momentum? A, a large truck moving at 50 kilometers an hour. B, a sports car moving at 30 kilometers an hour. Let me cross this out. 50 kilometers an hour, or then we have 30 kilometers an hour. Uh, or the Empire State Building. Or choices A and B have the same amount of momentum. So we should think about the mass. We should think about the velocity. What we should know right away is the Empire State Building, uh, even though it has a lot of mass, it doesn't move at all. So the velocity is zero, meaning momentum is zero. What you should know is a large truck has a lot of mass, and it's going pretty fast, so it has a lot of velocity. While the sports car has only a tiny bit of mass, and it's going slower. So we can see that A has more momentum because it has more mass and more velocity. Let's look at this one. What is the velocity of a 5 kilogram object whose momentum is negative 15 kilograms times meters per second? So this should be a relatively simple problem. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Momentum is negative 15. Mass is 5. And then we can try to find what velocity is. Velocity is going to be equal to negative 3 meters per second. I know, I know. Look at that. Okay, next thing we're going to learn about is impulse. So impulse is the change in momentum. So if something collides uh, or something hits each other, it's going to change momentum, and impulse is that change in momentum. So two ways we can think of impulse. Impulse is equal to the force times time, or impulse is equal to change in momentum, which is mv final minus mv initial. And we're going to be talking about that uh, at the beginning of this chapter, impulse, the change in momentum. So application of impulse. Most problems involve impulse will involve a force being in contact with an object for a very short period of time. Hitting a baseball, car airbags, uh, jumping, uh, punching. Anyway, when there's a short impact, a lot of times it's an impulse problem. Okay, And we're going to start talking about this. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip some of these. All right, let's look at this first example problem. Charlie is playing t-ball. He swings at a 0 0.144 kilogram ball that is at rest, hits it with a force of 182 newtons, which is in contact with the ball for 0 0.009 seconds. How fast will the ball be traveling after it's hit? So this ball has a mass of 0 0.144 kilograms. When he hits it, he hits it with 182 newtons of force for 0 0.009 seconds. So how fast will the ball be moving, traveling after it's hit? So what we should know is impulse is equal to the change in momentum. We know a formula for impulse is also the force times the time. Formula for change in momentum is mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So at the beginning, the ball experienced a force of 182 newtons. For a time period of 0 0.009 seconds, when he hits the ball, it's going to be in contact for a very short period of time. And the mass of the ball is 0.144. We're looking for the final velocity. And we should know at the beginning, it's at rest, so the velocity is zero. So this is all zero. Now let's do some algebra to figure out the final velocity. 182 times 0 0.009 divided by 0 0.144. And we get around 11.38 meters per second. All right, moving on. So similar question, a 0.144 kilogram baseball is moving toward home plate with a speed of 43 meters per second when it is bunted. The bat exerts an average force of 6,500 newtons on the ball for 0 0.0013 seconds. The pitcher throws in the positive x direction. The force will act in the negative direction. What is the speed of the ball after the bunt? All right, so let's look at this. 
Again, we're going to do the same thing as the first problem. We're going to do the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. We know the impulse is the force times time, so how long this force is acting on this object. And then we know the change in momentum is mv final minus mv initial. So this, this bat here is going to be in contact with this baseball for a very short period of time. So the bat hits the baseball with 6,500 newtons of force for a time period of 0 0.0013 seconds. So it's in contact for a very short period of time, uh, which you could, can imagine. It's going to hit this baseball that has a mass of 0.144 meters per second, and it's going to have a certain velocity after it's hit. What we should know is at the very beginning, it has a mass of 0.144, and the initial velocity is given as 43. However, something we should know is if this ball, the pitcher throws in the positive x direction, that means this is going to, the initial velocity is positive, but it says the force will act in the negative direction. And that should make sense, because if this is going in the positive direction, the force is going in the opposite direction. So this should be negative 6,500. So let's try to simplify this. 500 times 0 0.0013. It's going to be 8.45 negative is equal to 0.144 v final minus 0.144 times 43, uh, 6.19. So let's find what v final is. Negative 8.45 plus 6.19 divided by 0.144, it's going to give us around negative 15.69 meters per second. Okay. And then part B, what is the change in momentum? Um, oh, sorry, it says speed, so it should be a positive, but it's okay. So part B, what is the change in momentum? Again, we should know change in momentum is equal to mv final minus mv initial. So we have m, which is 0.144, velocity final, which is negative 15.69, minus m, 0.144, times velocity initial, which is 43. And let's see what we get for this. 0.144 times negative 15.69, uh, minus 0.144 times 43, and we get negative 8.45. Uh, kilograms times meters per second, okay? Because that's the units for momentum. Part C now says, what is the impulse? We should know impulse is equal to the force times time. So this is going to be the force, which is negative 6,500 times the time, 0 0.0013. And the impulse is going to give us 6,500 times 0 0.0013. And we get the same answer negative 8.5 kilograms times meters per second. And we should have known that already. We should have known that because we know that the change in momentum and impulse are the same thing. They equal each other. Okay? Okay, moving on. A 0 0.015 kilogram marble is dropped from rest onto the floor 1.44 meters below. If the mouse ball bounces straight upwards to a height of 0.64 meters, with what velocity does the marble hit the floor? With what velocity does the marble come up off the floor? With what is the magnitude of the impulse for the marble? If the marble was in contact with the floor for 0 0.025 seconds, what force did the floor exert on the marble? So let's try to look at this. Part A, we're trying to find with what velocity does marble hit the floor? So it's going to hit the floor over here, and we want to find what that velocity is. Okay? Uh, we could use kinematics, but I'm personally going to use energy. So I'm going to know at the very beginning, uh, the marble has potential energy, and at the end, it has kinetic energy. Mass of the marble is 0 0.015, gravity is 10, and the height is 1.44 meters off the ground. And then at the very bottom, there's all going to be kinetic energy, 0 0.1, 1 half, 0 0.015, velocity squared. So knowing that, let's find what the velocity is going to be, 0 0.015 times 10 times 1.44, divided by a half, divided by 0 0.015, and then the square root of that. And we should get 5.37 meters per second. But we should also know that this is going to be hitting 
going down. So when it hits the floor, it's going to be going negative 5.37 meters per second. Part B is, with what velocity does it come up off the floor? So once it comes up off the floor, we want to find the speed of that. And it won't be coming up off the floor as fast because we see that it only goes up to a height of 0.64 meters. So we can say at the very beginning there's kinetic energy and then it goes up to a certain height. So we have 1 half mass, 0 0.015, velocity squared is equal to mass, 0 0.015, gravity, which is 10, and the height, it goes up to a height of 0.64 meters. Uh, this cancels out, so we could just do that. Masses cancel out. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to do the right side first. 10 times 0.64 uh, divided by 0.5 or, or half. And then square root of that. And we get 3.58 meters per second. So it comes up off the floor at 3.58 meters per second. Okay. Now, part C is what is the magnitude of the impulse for the marble? So we want to find what the impulse is exerted from the floor. So we want to figure that out. So <clears throat> we should know the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So we should do mv final minus mv initial. So that's going to be the mass of this, which is 0 0.015. Velocity final is going to be the velocity after it hits. So that's going to be 3.58 minus uh, mass, 0 0.015, times the velocity initial, which is negative 5.37. And this is going to give us a certain answer, 0 0.015 times 3.58 minus 0 0.015 times negative 5.37. And then we get 0 0.13. Uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay. And we should know, <clears throat> and we should know that whenever something bounces like this, they're going to be in opposite direction, giving it a lot more impulse, a lot more change in momentum. So some, when something bounces, there's going to be a lot more impulse or and many times a lot more force when it bounces off something. If it just stayed there, this would have been zero and the impulse would have been less. But when something bounces, there's a lot more impulse that, uh, objects feel. So part D, oops, part D, if the marble was in contact with the floor for 0 0.025 seconds, what force did the uh, floor exert on the marble? So we should know impulse is equal to force times time. The impulse is 0.13. The force is what we're looking for, and we know it's, it was in contact with the floor for 0 0.025 seconds. So now let's try to find the force. 0.13 divided by 0 0.025, and we see that it was 5.2 newtons of force. So the marble hit the ground with 5.2 newtons of force, and the ground hit the marble with 5.2 newtons of force. Okay. All right, uh, moving on. Okay, uh, one car crashes into a concrete barrier. Another car, okay, conceptual question number three. Uh, one car, car crashes into a concrete barrier. Another car crashes into a highway barrier filled with water at the same speed. What is the difference between the two crashes? Select all that apply. So you might have seen these things in the on the highway where they are barriers. They're actually like filled with water, these orange things. And then you have these other barriers that are like concrete. So we're going to see what's the difference. Change in momentum, force on the passengers, impact time on the passengers, final momentum. So we should know that at the very beginning, if they have the same velocity, uh, let's say 10, <laughs> 10, and then at the very end, when they crash, they're going to have the same final velocity. So final velocity would be zero for both of them because they crash and they come to a stop. So what we know is their change in momentum is going to be the same. They're going to have the same mass and then the same change in momentum. Okay. So their change in momentum are going to be the same. So that's going to be the same. The final momentum is going to be the same for both of them. They both have a final momentum of zero because they both come to a stop. But what we should know is the force on the passenger and the impact time is going to be different. So even though the impact, the change in momentum is going to be different, when this hits the water thing, this is going to get compressed a lot more, and it's going to uh, it's going to take a lot more time for the impact to happen. While when it hits this concrete thing, it's going to have a very short impact time, so it's going to be a lot more shorter. 
So even though their impulse is the same, we see that this one is going to have a lot less force acting on it because it has an impact. Uh, the, when it crashes, it's crashing for a longer period of time, meaning the force won't be as much. But for this one, the impact time is going to be very short, so it'll experience a very large amount of force. So the force on the passengers are going to be different and the impact time on this. When it hits this water thing, it's going to compress a lot more, meaning the impact time will be a lot longer, meaning the force it's going to feel is a lot less. Okay. All right, and that's all we're doing for this one. Uh, next time, we're going to do a little bit more problems with impulse. Thanks for watching, guys.